Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to the eighth episode of Roundtable. I am Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. And we're going to do something a bit more personal today. So this is something Joe and I have been talking about doing for a while. Talking about the origins of how this network came to be. Because we're, we're still pretty much in our infancy. I'd say we're about three or four months into the game now. Uh, a big shout out and thank you to our, our subscribers who, who keep us motivated to keep doing this. Um, yep. in, in the early days of like insecurity where you're not really sure if, if what you're doing is right. Because you, you're not really getting much feedback. But you know, you're know you doing it because you love it. And, and a supreme thank you to, to the people who've been supportive of us and all that uh so joe um let's uh what have you let's talk about how this got started why don't you start us off well what uh, what got me uh into this you know it's uh I, I, for 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 quite a number of years uh before you and i ran into each other uh, I, I tried to, to get together uh, some sort of gaming related podcast and uh Ran to, to my, my first kind of major hurdle getting into into this, and that, that was getting people to be honest and to commit to doing something. For for me, that that, that was uh, something that was very difficult right from day one. So, I kind of in the sense that you, you you'd have this idea, you get all excited about it, have this incredible conversation with somebody. And then you start making the plans. Okay, we're gonna commit to doing this, and then you set a date, and then what happens? And then people would either. I mean, I had a number of things happen to me. I had, I had people, you know, that uh, would, would lead me on right up until the point where I would say, okay, you know what? Let's let, let's get together and let, let's let, let's start this thing. And then I would I would get you know anywhere from the you know, people just flat out saying no, or that or just kind of playing dumb and saying, well. Well, what's a podcast? You know, and, and people just being uh, what's a podcast? Yeah, like like just being uh, like maybe not necessarily dumb, but just being kind of like two faced about it, and and uh, it, it really kind of discouraged me. Like, cause I, this, this is something that, that, I've, that I've tried to do with a number of people, and uh, I just I kept it got me so discouraged to to the point where it was almost getting to the point with me where I I, I wasn't gonna do it. Uh, this is this really goes to something that my dad always tried to kind of warn me about about trying to do business with your friends, which I'd say in my past experiences is nine times out of ten gone gone pretty south. I mean it it, it can it can it, it, there's a honeymoon period where you're both excited about the idea, but it really comes down to who's more motivated and and who's more realistic about r risk versus reward. I mean you've got to know, Joe, when you start your own venture, you're gonna have that 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 period where you're not going to make a lot of money or, or anything like we're making we've made zero dollars off this so far we, we well we're working up towards it but slowly very 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 slowly and that's fine we both have jobs that can that can pay our rent and i've got my internet bill paid off mostly <laughs> uh, well, but you know it, it keeps us going this uh, you know brings up a, a, a really important point about this, is that uh, you know right off the bat you know, when you get into this sort of thing, I, th I think a lot of people you know and, and at the very beginning I will say I was a little bit guilty of this of having this this vision of, of fame or of stardom, thinking that you're going to get into this and then boom right away you're going to become famous. Uh, th that's one thing that, that we need to debunk like right off the bat. You know, get, getting this you you have to be humble and, and, and know that you're going to have to to build up organically Good. it's exactly. two major things it really it's that what you're saying this this whole what we've mentioned a couple of times and i really want to kind of explore this theme because i don't think we've explored it enough the whole idea that modern fame and hype machines the the ones that we've become accustomed to in other media like tv and film and, and how people tend to promote things it's it's mostly a fucking lie. It's it really is, and this isn't bitterness talking. This is like over 15 years of, of like being in the entertainment industry and having seen having seen how manufactured this the the the, the mainstream really is. You know, it's a, real, a lot of it is really predecided. It has nothing to do, you know, with what people want. It's basically what they're told to like. And and for people that are trying to get into this kind of like this veritably not. New, not brand new, but veritably new medium of video game broadcasting on the web. They get in with these ambitions. A lot of them do, and I know they do, even if they don't want to admit it. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm in here just for the games and, and bullshit. That's why you're doing sensationalist videos and trying to get and, and talking about how many likes and shares you get. Oh yeah, you're so in this for the games. 
I think deep down everybody who creates wants that sense uh, of appreciation for their work. I mean, that's just that's just in any artist or creator. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's just no. that some people take it to that next level. It's just that they want to be adored by millions. They want to be the next PewDiePie. They want to be the next, you know, Total Biscuit. They want to be the next uh, Boogie, you know, and, and that takes time. Boogie's been doing this since 2000, what, six? Yeah, that's a lot of years, dude. That's like a decade. Like, give me a break here. Like, the guy's put in his time. You think this happened overnight for him? You don't think he's had no. sleepless nights and, and trollers like we've had? Joe, like, and that's the other thing I wanted well, to get at too. That people want this immediate reward. You know, everybody's so immediate today, like, because of the internet age, that everybody gets what they want at the click of a button, whether it's a movie, a newspaper yeah. article. So they want that fame instantly too. They want that payout, and it's just not going to come right away. And you're going to have nights where where you question if you still want to do this, and that's really, I think, the cut of your jib if you can survive those early nights. You know, and talking specifically about uh, about trollers, this is something that uh, you know, since we we've begun this uh, journey that you and I have gone on, uh, I, I personally experienced quite a bit of. And uh, it's you've it's learned not it, to give out your personal email now. Yes, uh, yes, uh, that, that was a <laughs> le- that, that was a lesson very hard learned. I, I mean, uh, I, I, I up until just recently, I, I would receive roughly on a daily basis between probably ten and twenty emails, just ripping into me you know and it came i mean i i i, I knew where some of it was coming from some of it was a little bit of a mystery to me and uh at the beginning i i, I gotta say that uh, you know I, I, at the start i, I did take it take it a little bit personally because l- l- like you said you know doing this you mean you do get into it you know hoping that that people will like what you do obviously you know but otherwise uh, you wouldn't be to, doing it like what else are you doing it for right yeah like, well it's but part to, of to inform people yes but you know, why are you doing it then? Like you want to be, you know, accepted, right? What I've taken from it is uh, people that are, that are doing that. I mean, it, it's a, uh, you know, what I like to call it, it's basically like a, like a, a version of, of bullying. And that's what it, I, I, know, I know that uh, some of the people that, that have been targeting me specifically, you know, I've been doing this to, 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 to get a rise out of me, to maybe even like on one of these shows to really kind of burst out at them. And, uh, you know, what I've been saying now, that's going to be pretty well the end of it. You know, that's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call it any names or anything like that. I'm not, all I'm gonna say is that uh, you know, for me, I've actually kind of taken it and kind of flipped it around, where I've actually used it as motivation for me personally. That's all I've ever done. You know, I think we we you know through personal chats, we both come from you know backgrounds of bullying. You know, I, I had my my days that I've worked through. That's personal stuff. I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but I, mm-hmm. I know what it's like. I, I know the mentality of the bully dearly and deeply from having studied my enemies all my life uh, there was always just something about me you know i have a very uh device of personality you either love me or you hate me and you know <laughs> i yeah. wouldn't say the ratio is always in my favor but hey that's just the way i am i'm not going to change it or clean it up for anybody this is who i am uh, this is it's kind of getting around to why we started the show joe it's just it's just a, it's really just an outlet to speak the truth and, and to not be censored you know to just just to say it as you truly see it joe i mean we both come from over 30 years of video gaming and in, in our backgrounds we've seen most of the generations i wasn't around for the first generation i was born 1980 but you know i was there for the second generation on Yep. I've seen not only trends in the industry and studied from history and have learned it but also I've watched, even though, you know, I'd say as Joystick Justice League, we, we didn't come like early into the game. You know, we only started about three months ago, but in the time of preparing the show, I've watched a lot of other videos and I, I've followed a lot of other people on Twitter and Facebook. I've seen people rise and I've also seen people crash and burn. And it's usually for the same reasons, Joe. Let's get into some of those reasons. Why? Let, let's, 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 let's start off positively first. Okay, so what... What have you seen people do right? What did we do right? Let's let's talk about the 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 yin to the yang first. Well, what uh, what, what, what I think that, that that we've done right personally is that we've come at it from a very uh, you know as, as non biased as, as we can. We, we try we try and uh, you know and our, our our main focus has been particularly on uh, on um, supporting it and kind of informing people about uh, games that, that don't necessarily get a lot of attention you know uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, sites tend, tend to kind of focus on, on the games that already get a lot of attention we, we, we try and you know it's almost right in our name justice league and we try and 
get some exposure and some justice for for games that wouldn't necessarily get some get the exposure that uh, that in my personal opinion deserve the attention. Right. Yeah. It's not like they're completely ignored. I mean, you know, if if you if you search deep within the mm-hmm. vaults of IGN or GameSpot, you'll find a trailer for these games or something. But they're not. On the whole, the ga- the games that always get the constant attention, like the Watch Dogs, yeah. you know, the Witchers, yeah. you know, any of the big AAA titles, and, and that's the thing too. Like, I, I think it's it's surprising we haven't had a lot of hostility towards us as being hipster snobs because I think we were pretty clear on the outset that yeah we are talking about indie games but mm-hmm. I also play Call of Duty and NHL hockey so I don't yep. I, I don't fit any of your stereotypes and that's what no. pisses people off is just they can't put me and I know you into this box and just label us you know like I'm kind of a gaming chameleon I kind of embody traits of many different stereotypes and maybe that's just too complex but I think that's the attitude we're trying to bring to this it's just making this the news like this isn't just like a vlog this isn't like a diary of us talking about our day if you want us to talk about our day follow us on Twitter Facebook message us whatever but we, we came here to bring you the news and because that's the whole reason I wanted to do this I wanted to tell people about these games that it's like did you hear about this game oh no I, I didn't hear about it well here's the video there yeah. you go and this is why I think it's cool and then that, that's where I, where, I, where I get that little where I get that sense of satisfaction is when we we, t- we, t- we talk about like a particular game that, that doesn't necessarily get a lot of exposure and, and people go oh that, that, that's cool and that, that's actually a game that I want that I want to actually get you know, when I hear something like that, I go, "Okay, we we mission accomplished for us. You know, we 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 did what we set out to do." And Joe, we've had it levied against us from people we know personally that we might be wasting mm-hmm. our time with this. Why are we doing this? Hey, Joe, how many t- how many games have I actually sold people on during a, just a random Twitch broadcast? How many people like? And, I, and I'm not bragging. I'm talking about like people that bought Rayman Legends after watching me speed run it on Twitch yeah. all those nights, or or went and like the one night I was playing Towerfall Ascension at three in the morning, and somebody gets on there's like, what is this random and wacky, interesting game you're playing? And I gave mm-hmm. them this really passionate breakdown review, like while I was playing it, like something you'd see on like a review show, and he's like whoa you know okay cool I, and he bought it like that second he's like i just bought it on steam thank you so we're it's, doing something here man it's almost uh, you know the best way i could i could describe those those twitch tests is it's like a it's like an interactive almost like a hands-on kind of review with uh, the people that are they're that actually watching you know not, not only are they are they kind of seeing a little bit of review but they're actually seeing like a person actually playing like instead of just seeing like like a like a cutscene or, or just some footage of a game being played, you're actually seeing somebody actually there playing it and voicing their opinions and telling you about it right at the moment. I like the fact that you're bringing this in now because now we can talk specifically about certain genres within this video game broadcasting world because we have we have vloggers, we have reviewers, we have critics, we have we have yeah. Twitch Twitch players. There's there's so many different factions now. It's not just everybody's just like you know like everybody has a show like Boogie 2988. No, there's just so many different types of shows um let's talk about twitch broadcasters what they what we've pe- seen people do right what we've seen people do wrong like i know again we we, we addressed this previously mm-hmm. but i think it's it's good to touch upon this again so you know you were mentioning the fact of providing reviews during playthroughs that's huge nobody yes. wants to sit there and watch a bump on a log just kind of playing a video game online and maybe grunting and coughing every once in a while and you're, that's you're where broadcasting. it comes in. And that's what it comes to, and we touched about on this on a on a past uh, roundtable episode. You know that that, that have, having having the video of you playing on, on there, and actually seeing you play play a game, and that that's a really nice because you're you're actually seeing, you know, not only the the game being played and, and went on and being talked about, you're actually seeing a person's reaction to actually playing it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's right, and, and that's and again, it goes into that whole virtual co-op couch co-op experience it's like if you can't be on the same couch and enjoy the game well here i've got my game here i'm I'm talking to you i've got a beer you got a beer we're chatting it's it's kind of like being in the same room when we can't be there there's really a social element and and it also comes down to branding um Mm -hmm. but and that really covers what people have done wrong too it's just it's just not being entertaining but um okay talking about What? what what people do wrong okay so 
Let's talk about hype for a second, Joe. I know we're kind of bouncing around here. We, we haven't really addressed how we kind of got together. We're, we're going to kind yes. of come back to that in a sec. But let's maybe just take a second to address what, what people do wrong in, in this, this new industry that's happening. What, what have you seen people make mistakes in and why they lose viewers and why they lose integrity and why they or why they can't get their venture further than they have? They're, they're kind of just plateauing at a really low level. Why, why, are, why are some of the reasons? Uh, one of them uh, I would say is that uh, you know, number one, I, I think too many people get this. Uh, I've already mentioned this. Get this idea of, of fame right off the bat. Number one, I, I think that uh, people they get themselves psyched up only to be disappointed. Number one, and uh, an another one also is that uh, I think some people they. It seems like uh, you know, especially when it comes to to being humorous, like to being funny, like uh, a lot of it seems like it, it's like the it's like a character, or like the, this persona that they, that they try to create. And, and if you're if you're a person who isn't like naturally funny, like 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 let's say like a Robin Williams or like a Carlin, or or, or whatnot, if you if, if you don't have that 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 natural ability, and it's something that you're you're actually forcing, people will pick up on that. Like if like if you're if if you're putting on this really kind of like a phony kind of sounding voice, or if you're really trying to to like force this kind of persona. This is not scripted. Like I'm not looking at an no. agenda right now. No. Um, this is this is who I am, and and this is again part of what what we've done right is that. Well, and that's just a personal preference. Some people like characters, Joe. Some people like yes. that character. I like news. I like I like people who are real, who, who I can believe, who I can trust, especially Joe, because I keep seeing this over and over. We are in wartime, Joe. Okay, mm -hmm. World War Three is happening right now, and I know, oh yeah, people are like, oh, Mike, you're just being sensationalistic. No, just, just connect the dots. This is of, of what goes on in other wars. Yeah. We're in World War. I'm sick of all the disinformation out there, Joe, whether it's in politics, whether it's in music, whether it's in games. I'm sick of it, Joe. I'm sick of these yeah. fence sitters and these and these people who, who basically read the official statement, who don't question anything. This is the way we yeah. talk, Joe, this round table. We're not yeah. playing characters. We're not playing for laughs yeah. here. If we get a laugh, it's because it came out naturally. And that's one of the one of the secrets of comedy. Mm -hmm. Joe, you mentioned this, like you mentioned people like Robin Williams and George Carlin. And, and you kind of said something that I'm going to kind of challenge you on where you said it's like a natural ability i'll agree that there are certain comedians that were probably just born funny you know there are other people who can learn it mm -hmm. okay and, and i will attest to this personally okay because i know i yes. get laughs I'm, i don't know not everybody thinks i'm funny but i've managed to get people to laugh at me publicly so i feel like i've learned something it's from studying comedy joe you know this as well as i do yep. you watch a lot of stand-up comedy too and the more yes. you study comedy and not only current comedians like russell peters and aziz you study like the masters, like you're saying, like George Carlin, Lenny Bruce, uh, mm -hmm. like even go further back, Charlie Chaplin, like as a physical comedy or anything, just studying yeah. timing. You always mention that, like when we were reviewing South Park, you, you talked about the timing of the comedy. Yeah. Timing in comedy is a science, okay? It, it, it really is. You can't just, I. it's like the post Jim Carrey era. You know, mm -hmm. once Dim, Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura came out and that whole hokey and Adam Sandler, the idea that you could just be random and hokey and make that funny, Joe, I'll admit that probably works for like maybe five minutes. It's like, yeah, ha, ha, yeah. this kid, this person's being goofy. All right, get to your fucking point. And there's people yeah, who just off. rely on that. It's like catchphrases or, or buzzwords that they have to rely on or mm. uh, they, they just never say anything because they're too busy trying to be entertaining and not realizing that you can be entertaining and funny at the same time but just being natural just being natural and that's where you get to, to some comedians who do like uh you know i'm a particular fan of uh ones that do like the kind of observational humor when it comes to like like seinfeld and some of these uh, like uh jim gaffigan russell peters you know it, it's uh it feels a little bit more organic like it, it just it, it doesn't feel like you can tell when you when you watch a, a stand-up comedian performing you can tell like pretty re well right away whether they're like a naturally funny person or if it's being forced or and you can also tell if it's somebody that's actually learned how to be funny i mean oh, yeah. there's definitely there's definitely you can definitely see the, the different types well it's, it's how quick they can think on their feet like anybody can tell mm -hmm. can retell a funny joke but in the heat of the moment yeah. Can you make that quip that's gonna gonna you know break the whole house down? It's like, and then that, that just exactly. comes from Joe. I'm gonna tell you that that's something that doesn't come overnight. That's coming from like a history of me getting burned, like telling bad jokes that nobody laughed at, like that 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 
brutal, poisonous sense of embarrassment when you tell a bad joke in public. Dude, I yeah. burned through millions of those. But you know what? Oh, yeah. you, you've got to do it. Every comedian, yep. great comedian fell on their face before they became funny. I'm not saying I'm a great comedian or you're a great comedian. I think we, we just try to be naturally funny to keep it light. But again, it's whenever we're being funny, it's not because it was forced. It's just because the, the situation yeah. called for a quip. Any any time, like if, if if you've watched any of our of our shows, uh, whenever I've kind of come in there with a bit of a joke, uh, you know, you know, I talked about this before we uh, started recording here tonight. That it's not like a, I'm looking at a document uh, and, and saying, okay, well, here's joke number one that I want to hit. Here's joke number two that I want to hit. Here's joke number three. They all happen. <laughs> Or, or you, you got it in your backpack and you're like just waiting for the right it's, moment to drop it. You know, especially with uh, like when we play Rage Quitters. I mean, uh, that, that's stuff that, that you, you can't plan that because like especially in a game like Super Meat Boy, things happen randomly. That's right. And, and, and jokes like that, like, like ones that I particularly spun out there, I mean, they, they have all been just off the cuff. Like, they, they've just been spontaneous. Like, oh, boom, it was like an idea that I just thought on the second. It wasn't something scripted. Right. You know, and, and it... And that's one thing that that, uh, that we try and do is that uh, yes, I mean, like uh, obviously for like breaking news, I mean, we have a bit of an ag agenda, but we we try and and, and stay fairly fairly uh, open ended. And, There's basically uh, talking points. I, I all we're looking at when we're doing that agenda is is basically the developer name, the release date, uh, the genre, and we're just relying on our memory at that point. Like we're not reading anything, man. Like we are basically I mean, we've watched the trailer like 10 minutes ago and yeah. it's fresh in our memory like that's all that's yeah. all breaking news is now okay yeah i i kind of you know shit on people who play characters and again th there's nothing wrong with that as long as you know how to mix it up with a little bit of truth and i find some people who just get stuck in that character mode like i'll admit i play a little bit of a character like duffel bag boy is my character on twitch mm -hmm. and rage quitters where it's it's a bit of a, an exacerbated version of myself and i'm sorry not exacerbated yeah. exaggerated version of myself yeah. Um, but Tim, but seriously, when I sit home by myself and play Rayman, I'm like, fuck, shit, fuck. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a little louder when I do Rage Quitters. But at the it, end of the just, day, like, well, sorry. It just, it just happens naturally. And, yeah. you know, and we always try to be fair. Like, even, uh, uh, I believe it was my second uh, episode of Judgment Day. I mean, I, I came across, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, a shitty game. And uh, I, 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 I said it exactly how, how it was, you know. The, uh, it, was, it was a game that I came across that, that didn't work. I didn't sugarcoat it in any way. I said, you know, that, that this is a game that, that I got. Here it is. You can't play it. You talk it. about Metal Slug and, 3 on iOS. Exactly, and I, and I did receive a, a little bit. I don't, yeah, I don't let's, think let's I, talk about the aftermath of that one, and, and let's clear your name a little bit for, for some of our haters who wanted to call us on our research methods. Let, let's talk uh, about this. Okay, so that video has a date on it. Go check on YouTube. Mm -hmm. What happened after you posted that video? It, about uh, Metal Slug. Think... And if, if, sorry, if, sorry, if nobody's seen the Judgment Day where he reviews Metal Slug, uh, in, a, in, a reason, in an original pre-patched version, the game played with the part of the screen cut off and Joe called them out for that and hoped that they would yep. fix it and stress that in the review in the most polite way possible. But anyway, go on, yep. what happened? And uh, I, I don't think that we received any uh, uh, hatred or any comments on the channel, but I actually did receive a few emails about that going, well, I saw some videos on, on YouTube and they had it playing just fine. And I, <laughs> Yeah, okay. And and, and uh, I didn't respond, but I mean, I, I, I felt like saying, you know, what the, the proof is right there. We 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 captured video of me actually trying trying to play this on my iPad, and the the evidence spoke for itself. That now, like we said, you know, that this was later on just recently patched, and then the game does work fine now. But I mean, at at, at the time, I, I I called a spade a spade. It was a broken game then, and and it was and for it, a while. This wasn't like you it just was, picked this up. Within like in a two day span, it wasn't working for like two days. No, you'd had this for a while. Finally decided like a, to speak out on it. And this was weird too, Joe, because when I was looking for videos to back up your claims, yeah. it was like those people who were calling you out. It's like all I could see were, I, when you look up Metal Slug at that time, you would have found about two or three Let's Play videos that were full screen, no problems, no mentions of any problems, but that was it. There were like those two or three videos. And then you showed me on your webcam, you physically held the iPad, showed me that it had been updated to current version on the yep. store, wasn't working, and, and possibly through enough complaints, maybe through your complaint, it got patched, but then you got I called even, out for, oh, it's working fine, you didn't do your research. Look at the date uh, on the video. 
Yeah, I know. And I even before we captured that moment, I actually I did this right in front of you. And I don't know if we actually put it on the video, but I actually I I, I deleted it off my iPad and I downloaded the most I downloaded the, the current version, which happened to be the same because it wasn't updated. But and you know it, it, it wasn't like I, like I purposefully went out searching for a shitty game to expose it. You know, I I, I just came across a game. It didn't work, and I just felt like it, like that, that issue needed to be addressed. Absolutely, man. That's the point of a review. It's it's like consumer reporting, man. It's it's educating mm -hmm. consumers. I mean, you paid money. Oh, people are like, oh, you only paid what five bucks for that? Five bucks? Five bucks? All right, I'm sorry. That's that's lunch or dinner or a couple of coffees. You know, that's that's money. Okay, you paid for that. And there's no reason for people to have to buy a broken unpatched game which thankfully was patched and that's great mm -hmm. but again before you lay charges of research look at the date on the update do some research of your own if you're going to call us out on our research look at the date of the update and look at the date of the video that was posted and you'll clearly see that <laughs> we called a, a spade a spade yep exactly all right so let, we'll, we'll, we'll get back into some more of this stuff we we let's, really uh, let's go back a little bit we we, we didn't really talk about how we kind of formed where we met how why yeah. we did this together so let's let's start from the let's, beginning let's peel back the curtain a little bit here and, and tell people a little bit yeah okay so there was a party we we're both at uh mm -hmm. a video game party and i was there promoting something and and you were there you know as, as just like a kind of like you know a participant and stuff and and i remember we were downstairs and yep. uh i think we were watching somebody play the last of us and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, you know, and this was uh, something that uh, I originally wasn't. Uh, I, I, was, I was torn on whether I was going to go, and I thought, you know what, uh, I'm just I'm I'm just going to go. You know, I'm a person who loves games. I'm going to go. That you know, this is a video game party. This is something I want to go to. And and by a total chance meeting, we we ran into each other, and like you said, we saw Last of Us playing, and it was like right away a conversation sparked. Yeah, I think what I, 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 they were talking about how great it was, and I think mm -hmm. I kind of sh shot out my little remark. I'm like, yeah, you know, like I'd give this game a nine, a solid 9.5, 9.8 out of 10. You know, I, I, I wasn't crazy about the ending. I started kind of explaining, like, to anybody who wanted to listen to me why I had problems with the mor moral, morality of the ending. And, and then I think, because you were, you kind of wanted to, uh, pick up that conversation i think we almost got into a, a little friendly debate there right now we did. I, I think i actually said no it's a 10 out of 10 yeah you're like oh no no i think it's a little bit less and i was like no no, no i said you're, you're a wrong. fucking like, idiot i was like no you're <laughs> wrong this game this game's awesome it's like no the, the ending was awesome it's like right away there, there, there was a good debate and there was it was it was almost I, I think it's because you know like you mentioned earlier you know we've we're, we're we're the same age. We've been around. We've seen all the. So I, I I think there was like an immediate kind of rapport, you know, because just because we have a similar knowledge and a similar love of the uh, of the medium. The well, I, yeah, that was what it was. I, it's like okay, cool. Somebody who doesn't necessarily disagree with me because I hate people who kiss my ass. I fucking hate that. I don't <laughs> kiss ass, and I hate people who do it. Uh, yeah. I like people who are real. You know that. Anyway. Um, we're talking about The Last of Us, so, uh, you know, I'm looking, I, I don't see hostility there. I see somebody who's actually taking me seriously, who's offering something that's different from me, like from what I what I feel about the game, but can back it up with fact and, and reason. So I, I had to go out for a cigarette. I think you had to go out for one too, and I think we carried the conversation outside. It was a cold winter day, but and we, there's like uh, a line up outside. We're, we're, we're talking about like iOS and, and mobile Android. gaming and why it's important and... and, and you know where the next generation is going and it was like it wasn't talking about the weather you know it was it was talking about some deep shit i'm like all right man here, this is this, this almost sounds like we're, we're we're on a radio program right now why don't we just hit record sometime i think what we uh and if uh, if memory serves me right i think we uh exchanged uh kind of contact info and i, I think it was about uh, a week or two went by and and i can't remember if it was if i reached out to you or you reached out to me and I said, you know what? Uh, I've been looking at doing some kind of a pod, some some kind of a podcast when it comes to gaming, and you know, and you know, th these are some of the hurdles I've been through. I said, I, I, th I think it was me, and I said, is this something you would be interested in doing? And you said, and then you said yes, and then then it was like the the ball just kind of started rolling. Start because happening. it was it was timing. It's because I had just put out my first Joystick Justice League video on my on my own YouTube channel, which is still there. It's yep. the um, the PS4 voice commands, hands voice commands. on. 
It was like the night before I, it popped in my head, Joystick Justice League. I was going for a drive and that was the name of my new network and I was yeah. and I was going to do it on my own at first, you know. I, I was just like, it was a reaction to just having been burned like you had, yeah. you know, like just ha been burned so many times in the industry. Um, and having tried to work within the system and just getting exploited, humiliated by people I trusted. Yep. And it was just like, okay, you know what? Fuck this. I'm gonna if I have to do this on my own, I will do this on my own. I got a name, I've got an idea, and boom! I went, I used my capture card, put out that video, created the brand, yep. and, and it was right around the time we talked. It's like, all right, well, I'm interested in doing some podcasts. Cool, I've already started this thing. You want to do it with me? Boom! Joystick Justice League, and we start branding it and start creating show names. So, um, you know, it, it was just I think two people who had been burned. And really just wanting to get something done. Like, I, I knew from when you told me your history, like, you'd been kind of held hostage by people who were, like... And this happened to me so many times, man. And, again, going back to what I'm saying about working with your friends, like, mm -hmm. friends are there to hang out with, to have a good time with. Business is business. And that's, and that's the problem nine times out of ten. It's, like, you really want to do something and you have the drive to actually make it a reality, but the other person's, like, finding excuses all the time and procrastinating. Exactly. And, yeah, maybe they're insecure. Maybe they just don't care as much. They just... It, it goes back to this whole thing, Joe, as we, unfortunately, for better or for worse, push into the age of Aquarius where it's about the cult of celebrity and the worship of celebrity and everybody wants to be famous. It's yep. true, Joe. And, uh, everybody wants to be famous, but they don't want to do the work. I, I hate to quote Kevin Hart, but that's his, like, little <laughs> mantra that he chants with his, with his brothers and his cousins before he goes out on stage. He says... Who wants to be famous? Everybody. Who wants yeah. to do the work? No one. Something like that. You know, it's yeah. like, it's so yeah. fucking true, man. Everybody wants that limelight, but they're not afraid to put the, they're, they're too afraid to put the time in. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, a lot of, the, of, the, of those people that, that I think that you both, both you and I have run into, you know, they've, uh, they kind of came out of the woodwork a little bit too. And, uh, I personally received some of this, you know, like, well, well, you don't want to do a you want to do a show with me now, or or, or, or could I come on board and do some stuff with you guys too? You know, and especially the ones that, that that put it off and said, "Oh, how come you're not doing something with me?" I said, uh, one person in particular, I said right to them, "I'm not calling any names here," but uh, you know, I even said to one, I said, "I haven't heard from you." For almost a year now, and then just now you're coming. I was saying, oh, oh, how come you're not doing anything with me? I go, how long did you? How long were you expecting me to wait? You know, like, uh, yeah, what, what do you think? I am like Betty and Archie Comics. I'm just yeah. gonna hold a fucking torch for you for the rest I mean, of my life I mean, and, and I mean, not do anything while I'm waiting I mean, for you to be ready. I mean, it, it was something. I mean, that, that was just I was so ready to do for 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 quite a while, and to to, to finally meet somebody and to, to actually get somebody that, that, that had the same kind of drive and to, to actually commit and say okay let's let's do it that that, that was a huge moment for me personally. yeah and people I mean if you're, you're if you're experiencing that yourself and trying to get something done with somebody else well if you if you have the drive to create something just go do it okay even if it's by yourself don't feel like you failed as a human being because you couldn't make it work with somebody there are a lot of talkers out there very yep. few doers and the more you do it the more you'll find other doers who, who who appreciate what you're doing okay that's fine we've got our haters i'm gonna address you all right now all the people that actually they haven't really been thumbs downing our videos lately i think they've kind of backed off knowing that they mm -hmm. can't really fuck with us joe because again like we said in bold writing we've both been fucked with by the best you guys are amateurs okay all of you amateur bully your junior bullies out there who think you can get to us i, I, I can outthink all of you you motherfuckers okay so like seriously you're fucking yeah. with the best to quote scarface fuck with the best <laughs> that's true Yep, you know, it's, um, uh, and that's the thing, you know, like, to, but the yin to the yang is that on the flip side, you know, twi I'm finding Twitter to be very useful, man. Like, yeah. people in the gaming industry are finding me now, like, just because of the, the, the Joystick Justice League posts. And I'm actually kind of surprised, too, because if you have subscribed to me on Twitter, I'm not going to give you my address because it's pretty politically toxic. But I'm surprised <laughs> I actually have people continuing to follow on that but, uh, with some of the shit I post. But you, know, you got to be uh, honest in this world, man. And then now that you're leaning a bit more towards the positive, uh, I'm going to say this in particular. Uh, yes, we, the, the, there, ha there has been a fair amount of negative uh, since you, you know, I've gotten this going, but... I will address the, the positives. You know, there, there have been some people, you know, uh, some really close family, you and I, and, and uh, some of our lawyer viewers uh, that have actually really supported, and, and it, that part's been been really fantastic. You know, it's, you know, uh, I will particularly, uh, personally thank uh, my 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 mother, uh, Mike, you personally, and, and a handful of other. Uh, a couple of close friends and um, and whatnot that, that that have been extremely supportive, and 
that's been a, a extremely uh, helpful and, and uplifting for me, you know, to, to offset a lot of the negatives I have run into. Yeah, yeah, and, and same thing. So, so subscribers, our, our fellow broadcasters like Tethered, yep. Avatar Coma, who, who watch us faithfully on Twitch and stuff and keep the conversation going. And, and like I said, got to give a big shout out to my mom and dad, my brother Harry, my sister Katie, my nephews Eli and Christopher, who got my back. You know, like we are trying to create a community, but if, if you're just in this for yourself, and I see a lot of people who are, I see mm -hmm. a lot of people who love the attention they get, and they love talking about how new, many new Twitter followers they have, and how popular they are on Facebook, and oh, thank you, all my million subscribers for making me the biggest thing, but damned if they ever promote anybody else. And I know there are people who do, you know, Review Tech's been doing something great recently, mm -hmm. Review Tech USA, where if somebody sends him a cool article, he'll give their channel a shout out, put a link to it, that's fucking cool, okay? Love or hate what he says, he's at least trying to give some exposure back to his viewers, which I think is amazing. And I think anybody should be doing it. I think you should be grateful. I'm very grateful for the 24 subscribers we have. And I know people, I always hear this on the net, oh, you know, those low ranking channels that have only a thousand subscribers. I'm like, God, I don't. we don't even have a thousand subscribers. What are we, nothing? But those 24 subscribers, they were hard earned. No, and, they were hard earned. They, they were hard earned and, and th those are the ones that, that have been loyal and I will personally say right now thank you to those 24 subscribers and uh, you know it, it's uh, you know what what's, what I really like that, that uh, getting slightly off topic here what I really like that how we approach the show is that we haven't just and you, know, we, you touched on this a little bit earlier that we haven't just tried to be just like an, a news kind of a show you know we, we do do breaking news but we also do versions of let's play like like rage quitters like battle arena and the and these Fun down stuff. to earth and these down to earth round, we, we 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 try and be multi multi dimensional and, and also with with the twitch stuff and uh, you know with like i said with it being kind of like a hands on kind of review but also with the the sometimes heated debates that would, or topics that we talk about on there th those are really engaging and uh, and uh, you know then the, the people like to talk about so you know it's, it it goes beyond gaming and twitch has been a really good avenue for that actually you know one thing that's really come uh felt that that's really positively affected me is that uh before you and i started joystick justice league uh i had been attempting to do uh writing in some sort of capacity which uh, ended up uh, being a blog and uh, i always found myself you know trying to I even at some point tried to write like a book of some kind and I, I always ran into ran into this block where I just I couldn't get an idea or I just couldn't figure what I wanted to do. And then when we started doing this, I mean, I, I think I, I had already done one kind of gaming blog, but then I just thought, you know, I just had that kind of light bulb moment. I was, I said, you know what? That's it. I said, you know, all this time I've been trying to to write about something that I didn't maybe necessarily know too much about or. or couldn't get really an idea on it, it's just like gaming, you know, this is something that I love. And then right, right away, I mean, like I would sit down and it just, it, it, it kind of came naturally because I, I think I actually, I finally found what what uh, what I like to talk about. And then, then, then the ideas just started flowing. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of people can appreciate that that light bulb moment, Joe. And I think if maybe for somebody who's listening to this now, who maybe maybe has experienced those creative blocks or is currently experiencing those creative blocks, we all get, and and maybe they're suffering and they don't know how to how to deal with it. How how there had to be a way that you got through that creative block, Joe. Like, what did you do personally to to get around that creative block? Like, what were the steps you took, whether physically, mentally, in your daily routine? Like, what what did you do? Well, like first of all, it, it was finding that. that that topic that that uh, that just naturally kind of comes to you, and uh, and you know, and just uh, getting over this uh, kind of like a self kind of a doubt almost kind of, and then just coming up with the idea and then just kind of getting it down right away without uh, you know like I mentioned this before you know with with my process when it comes to doing writing is that I can't like write a little bit then walk away, think about it a little bit more and then write some more like I I, I just I, I get I, I get my thought and then I just bang it out in one shot. And uh, I, I just I found that that's been better because then I, I don't find myself thinking and second guessing and, and trying to tweak the idea too much. I just I get the idea and then boom, I, I just get it down. Yeah, you just gotta find some way to quiet your mind. You really, it's 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 it's. If you're fighting for inspiration, go outside your house, take a walk. That's when sometimes I get my best ideas. I just get out of my house, go for a drive or something, quiet my mind a little bit. You know, it's like if I'm really stressed out and that's where you, you get your big blocks. You just gotta remember, walk away from a bit. 
I remember just recently that there was a bit of a gap between uh, my latest blog and, and the previous one, and, and uh, I know you can uh, you remember this. You know, I, 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 I haven't written in months. I know exactly uh, what you're talking I, about. I, I, I went through that moment where, where I just wasn't coming down with it. And I remember you telling me, uh, I think you sent it to me in a message. You said, you know what, you're overthinking this. You know, just sit down and then just do it. And then I think it was that night. I just I sat down. And I had an idea. It was about the cinematic gaming. And then I just wrote. That's how I wrote my best blogs, Jill. Even though I haven't been very active, I've been very, very busy with editing this. And it's just it's just tough to... like. Because honestly, like, I'm a filmmaker first, a writer second. Um, Let's, uh, and I will get back to my blog at some point. But that's the thing. It's like when I've written my best blogs or, or done my best work on Joystick Justice League, it's just because I just sat down and just blah, you know, just let it go. Like, and, and especially with the blogging, you can always do an edit after. Just don't worry about spelling people. Don't worry about paragraphs and fonts. Just blurt it out. Who cares if the words are spelled wrong? Who cares if it's not punctuated yet? You will do that on a second or third pass. Get the ideas out while they're natural. Don't question them, write them down. You will you will read it again later and you will change things. That's fine, but just get it out. Let's, let's, uh, let's shit it out. Let's talk about the the editing of the episodes a little bit, Mike. Let's, All right. Let, let, let's talk about a little bit that and what's uh, what's involved there. You know, for, you know, especially for people that are that are possibly you know watching us and thinking, you know, hey, this maybe this is uh, something I like to do. What, what's kind of our process? You know, after we're done recording and we go to we go to actually edit and, and put out an episode. I'm going to keep this broad. I don't want to get too technical because everybody really has their own editing style. I have my own, my own editing style. It's very kinetic. Well, it's a, it's a mix between kinetic and, and meditative. It's, it's kind of like a fine line, but I'm not going to get technical. I'm going to talk to you about kind of like the principles I use when I'm going to say, and I'll start with breaking news, okay? You have to tell a story, okay? You, you have to, it's, it's both in, in the approach of how we're talking about the game and about how you're showing images. And one of the keys is that you've got to make the the words and the images go together, okay? And that's just my personal opinion. I know there are other people who don't give a shit, who just put random footage up while they're talking about the game. Doesn't really match. It's it's kind of like uh, you know, like you re, re somebody's reading their review that they wrote and just kind of putting some random scenes from a game over. And, and there's there's that disconnect for me, just because I come from that film school perspective where I where it's like everything's got to make sense on all angles like everything's like I you know like we've talked about this before we're both in we're both inspired by Kubrick Stanley Kubrick very perfectionistic film director everything was purposeful there was no fat on those movies Dr. No. Strangelove is like for in my opinion anyway the perfect one of the most perfect movies ever made where nothing is wrong with that film and that's and again you can never really be perfect but if you can try to cut the fat while you're making the meal as best as you can, that's the attitude I take. And that's from coming from a radio background where you're on the spot and you have one take to get it right. Yep. And, and that's that's really what I approached you with when I, when you we were talking about the style. And, and you you kind of got it. It's like, let's talk about some of our influences, Joe. Who we, what, what, In terms of the broadcasting style and your approach, who were some of your big influences? You know... Uh, you know, I, I, I watch uh, you know, in the, the little bit of free time that I do have now. I, I do watch other podcasters, and, and uh, my two personal favorites are, uh, I would say, number one, uh, one of my main uh, influences and who I would like to try and mimic is uh, what uh, Leo Laporte has done with uh, the Twit Network. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that that is just a wonderful collaboration with people that are uh, that obviously love the industry, you know, and they go about it in a very uh, they have they they have a really cool process, you know. They have a number of collaborators, and everything just seems to work uh, well. And uh, and they're not uh, really kind of governed by, you know, they're not really influenced by a lot of these big companies. They they they, they just voice their, their opinion. They they do a lot of different kind of shows. And uh, you know, and, and another one uh, one of my favorites. You know, he's not uh, like a tech journalist or a game journalist, but Joe Rogan is uh, another person that I kind of look up to as a broadcaster. And there's a guy that I mean, he just he he just he got into it and just, you know, right, right off the bat, you know, he just he speaks about what uh, what he believes in, and, and just and voices his opinion. You know, love or love him or hate him, you know, he 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 does things the way that he wants to do them, and and it does it in a very professional. And I I really enjoy watching both of those guys work. Well, okay, let's take because I want to jump off that Joe Rogan, for me too, very big influence, but. Uh, going back even further, like I used to watch a lot of pro wrestling back in the mm -hmm. 80s when I was growing up, 
And Me too. damned if you couldn't get better than Gorilla Monsoon, Jesse Ventura doing WrestleMania. Mm. Like that that AM radio very real the guy who's t t giving you the blow by blow in the color commentary they've lived this shit okay joe rogan is a fighter himself a trainer yep the guy is brilliant he does his research he's not reading a teleprompter you can tell when somebody's reading a teleprompter when they're speaking leo laporte speaks okay yep. and, and for me politically love or may hate him the people at infowars alex jones david knight Yep. They are not reading teleprompters. They yep. are researched. They do their research. That's and they talk from the heart, from the brain. And, and that's why it sounds real and that's why it sounds immediate and that's why it's passionate because they're not just these suits for hires who come to look for pretty in front of the camera like, you know, a lot of mainstream journalists who who don't really have an idea or question what they're talking about. They're just reading a screen versus people like you and me who take the time to actually look at all angles, look at different sources and apply 30 years of of watching this industry go up and down, up and down. We live through Sega, dude. We don't just talk about it. We live through that, we, the we, Sega debacle. We live through the, the well, t I was young, but we lived through the, the, the crash of 83. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a big thing for us is we, you know, we try and portray, we, we uh, you know, it's, maybe that's not the right way to put it. It's, uh, we, we, you know, we just, we, we take our, our, our love of, I mean, obviously you and I, I mean, gaming, I mean, it's been a part of our lives since, I mean, geez, forever, you know. So we come at it from from that approach. You know, we're it's we, we just we, we talk from the heart. You know, it, it, most of the time, you know, like what we're doing right now, things aren't aren't uh, really set in stone, not scripted. It's uh, we just we, we we try and be as, as honest as we can. You know, I, I mean, we're, we're obviously we're, we're not perfect. If we do make mistakes, I mean, th 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 those happen. But we 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 try, we try and come at it from from. That perspective, you know, we, we don't try and enforce things too much if it doesn't feel right. Like I, I think we've we've tried. I think there's been a few cases where we we would sit down to do like a round table and and it didn't quite feel right, and we, we would like just go ahead and try to do it anyways, and then try and force. Because it was over scripted. Out. Like it was like our yeah. like there were, there were maybe one or two where it's just like it seems like we were relying too much on talking points and yeah. not just facing each other and talking, which we're we're kind of doing right now. And I'm not saying there were, there was were bad round tables. I think sometimes you have to do that, Joe, when you, mm -hmm. when you're doing a very abrasive topic that's that people are going to call you out on and you need to back yes. it up with research and facts so i'm not going to say yeah, what yeah. we did was wrong but i like to mix yeah. it up i like to do those essay like po podcasts and then do something yes. more personal and off the cuff like we're doing right now which which i wouldn't say is rambling because we still have an overarching topic and that's another thing i really want to recommend to all you kind of amateur podcasters who haven't really done professional radio or tv or anything like that at the end of the day I know people like to hear you talk, but they want to hear you talk about something. They don't want to hear yeah. you ramble on about the bologna sandwich you ate at lunch or or, or mention a cool point and, and then that's, just kind of change the subject because you don't know how to take it deeper. That's, talk I, to I've, people, entertain them. They're listening to you for a reason. I've, I've, I've seen that done where it almost seems like they're trying to pad their their shows with content by just having like... Like just a little kind of meaningless back and forth kind of little banter and jokes and that kind of stuff, you know. In and jokes, you no, know, that, 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 that that's fine for that that kind of stuff to just happen organically in a show. But like you said, you know, you do have to have, like you said, it's got to be you got to be talking about. There's got to be an overarching topic. There's it's, there's got to be. It can't be a show about nothing, or otherwise it just is nothing, right? <laughs> you know. That's what it just it it just seems to me like it's aimless rambling. You know, and that's fine. You know, like we, I don't, I don't, and, and that's just a just a general conversation that we don't really need to broadcast to the world. Like, we're, what are what are we doing? Like, if if we're demanding you take time out of your day to watch what, and, and listen to what we're saying, then we better be damn well saying something that's gonna make make it seem like you benefited from watching us. Like, just sitting and listening to us just go on about nothing, like in an unstructured way. Yeah, okay, that's okay for two minutes, but we better be damn funny uh, what we're doing. And I'm not I'm not a professional comedian. I can I can make quips. I, I yeah. can be quick, but I'd rather just use my powers of research, and you know, and being being passionate when I talk to talk about something I know about. You know, another thing too that that uh, you know, we should probably mention to uh, other people looking to get into this or other kind of amateur podcasters, in uh, as kind of a maybe a little bit of a warning that uh, when you do get into this, there will be down moments, whether it be like personally wise or maybe like a mental kind of a or like almost like a version of writer's blog be, be prepared for uh 
there's some kind of you know we're not immune to this either we've had moments where you know we've we've thought of quitting but that's the reality you are gonna fight because people get yep. jealous man because everybody has their own goals that are they're not making because they're too enslaved to the television or mentally enslaved morons that listen to pop music and they're not, they're too busy being cool to actually do something productive with their lives so they are going to be jealous and hateful and spiteful and resentful of the people who actually did get off their asses like you joe and you've experienced this man people are resentful of you now yes Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. and here's what I say to them. Fuck you, okay? Mm -hmm. Get a fucking job. No, for, for those people, you know what? I, I, I might as well totally peel back the fucking curtain here and, and, and tell people you know, about uh, about uh, my history when it comes to this stuff. You know, I, unlike you, I don't, I, 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 I don't come from a, a broadcasting background. I, I, I came into into this totally fresh, you know. And I, I think that's where uh, maybe I, I do get a little bit of the resentment, or I've actually had some hatred, you know, thrown my ways because uh, you know people will tell me that, um, oh, you don't have any experience doing this, or, or some of them that even know what my, you know, I'm not going to say it on here, but some people that, that that do know what my day job is will ha have told me that. Oh, you you can't talk about uh, games because you're a you're a bleep you're you're such and such. You know, what, what I say to that is you know, I've gotten into this because you know I've I've, I've loved gaming and I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying trying to give this uh, my all. I'm gonna make mistakes, people. You know, it's you know, it, but I, I'm doing this because it, it's something that I'm passion, passionate about. So when when people kind of Attack me when it comes to that. You know, I, I did take some of it personally, but uh, like I said earlier, I, I've tried to take that and kind of flip it around on them, and and use it as motivation to to keep me going. You know, and you know the down moments that we've had. Luckily, you know that uh, we've uh, kind of picked each other up. You know, we both ha ha have had our moments where we've been down, or, or like you said, flat of, of not wanted to keep doing this. You know, and luckily we've been there to to kind of pick each other up and 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 kind of push forward. That's the thing. I mean, if you're in this as a collective, you're not doing this on your own. You have people you work with. This is your job, all right, to, to be supportive of these people because we're all putting ourselves out there. Like, this, this is a hard thing to do to express sometimes unpopular opinions in a public forum, and you, and you need that support to get to get through. Um, I, I kind of lost my point there. The other the, the thing is you were, you were talking about kind of... Um, people telling you that you can't do this because you don't have enough experience here's the thing joe okay okay yes okay maybe i have a little bit more experience but here's things i'm just gonna say i'm not trying to sound egotistical i'm just saying objectively i'm saying this you've been willing to try new things and but you've also been willing to listen to some advice now i'm not saying i'm an expert I, i'm only into like 15 years like even i make mistakes i talk too fast sometimes i say my my uhs and my little crutch words i'm not a true expert at this but i've learned a thing or two in 15 years of doing this and if i can pass that on to you then you can pass that on to the next person who who kind of starts green and and that's how the network builds organically you know people teach things and if and i think anybody who's out there if you're not willing to listen to people who have a little bit more experience than you and at the same time try new things and be open-minded, then you're not gonna get far. If you have an attitude and ego going to this, that you're gonna do whatever it is you want and you're gonna do it the way you want, you're gonna rewrite the rule book, well, guess what? There's a lot of us who have been through the bullshit and yeah. we're not gonna let that fucking happen. Okay, yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's what these people are trying to do. It's like, oh, who the fuck do you think you are, Joe? You know, you don't have any experience. Well, yeah, but you, 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 you're open about the fact that you don't have it, but you're learning fast, okay? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why you're learning fast, because you're, you're willing to, to put your ego aside and say, and when I, when I tell you, like, you know, sometimes I critique you and I feel and I feel worried like that maybe I'm not critiquing you properly, but I know I'm trying to do it. And, and same with you and me, like we critique each other, but we're doing it in a way that's like, I'm not telling you you suck, I'm telling you because I know you've done this before and you can push it higher. I've always, I've always taken uh, your as constructive criticism and, uh, you know, and, I, and I've used it to, 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 to improve. And, and I will say this particularly about, uh, about the editing, you know, that, that, editing video is something that I never yeah let's get back to that uh, I, I, never, I never would have thought that, that that would have been something that I would have gone into and um, you know the, the last uh, I believe it's the last uh, two uh, Judgment Day episodes I've actually tackled on editing myself 
and uh, you know, and and you've been extremely helpful. You know, I, I mean, it, it may have seemed like from your perspective where uh, you, I would show you a, a video that, that I edited and you would point out, okay, this is uh, something you need to change or adjust. And uh, I'm hoping that you didn't think that, that you were being too critical because no, like I said, like, like I said, uh, I didn't have to stand over your shoulder and, and yeah. spell it out for you. All I did was tell you, Yep. you're, you're going to hit some major, when you listen back to what you said, you're going to hit some major points and some are worth exposing more than the others. So like, let's just yep. say you're talking about NASCAR and then you talk about the leaderboards. Well, it might be helpful to put a marker there where you say, le, uh, you know, where you start to say leaderboards and yep. then boom, you plant a piece of footage that shows the leaderboards. So that yep. way there's not that disconnect when the viewer's watching it. It's like, because it's really hard to pay attention to what somebody's saying when the visuals don't match. Exactly, yeah. And that's why with Roundtable, it's like, I, I just created this billboard of images that you can watch if you want to, but really Roundtable is just meant for you to sit back on your couch with your eyes closed and just envision us in, in the room next to you. So, but that's the thing, you know, with the, with the challenge with editing, for anybody who's coming up, um, editing is, is like an art form. Please take it seriously and, and, and be critical of yourself. Learn to be objective. Like that's the other thing I've kind of tried to teach you too, which I do with myself, Joe, is be brutally critical of yourself listen to your own podcast don't just record and throw it out into oblivion go back when i, when I started out radio i'd have a cassette tape recording my my show while i was doing it in the booth and i'd mm -hmm. put it like immediately when i got back in my car after going off air i'd put it in my deck and start listening to it i'm like oh i could have started the record you know four beats back and made that a better mix between the two records or I, I gotta stop saying that so much I'm using that as a crutch word you, mm. you gotta learn to, to distance yourself from the, the work you're doing and that and that involves stepping away you have to learn to distance yourself from it and put yourself in the shoes of the person watching it who isn't personally invested in you but they're looking at the title of your broadcast and the fact that you said something interesting and they want to know more and if they like you there's other ways for them to get to know you than just you kind of like wasting a whole bunch of time going on about personal shit that nobody really cares about. There's a time and a place. I'm not saying don't get personal. Like right now, we made a podcast where it's kind of like get to know you and me. So that's, right. that's where this is. Yep. You know, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's been, uh, for me, it's been, uh, like I said, uh, for me, it was Quite a, quite a long time coming, and like I said, it, it was something that was difficult for me to get into, and it was it's it's been a really rewarding uh, experience for me so far, and it's been very new, and it's uh, you know yes there there have been there has been a, a fair amount of negative, but uh, I will say that uh, the positive stuff has uh, definitely now outweighed the, uh, the negatives because I mean it's uh, I've been I've been fairly lucky you know that the positive uh, support that I have gotten has a uh, like I, like I said, uh, really has pushed that negative stuff off to the side. You know, like I said, like I said, I, I've tried to use that negative stuff to actually uplift myself to to make myself better. Yeah, you you can't keep those feelings aside. Like you can't go and ruin everybody's day by going on and on about your problems. But you also have to have that outlet, and you have to have. Yeah. And if you have somebody that you're working with that you can trust, you really better value that relationship. Don't fuck that person over, okay? Because. No relationships where you can talk to somebody and move forward productively are rare in this industry okay you got to hold on it's, to those and, and like i've seen people burn each other for money and for fame or because somebody wanted to get in the middle that's that's one thing that's one thing with with, with us is that we have been don't burn people you know, that are close to yeah, you that's one thing that uh, you know i you know at times we've been brutally honest with each other and that's one thing that uh, you know right from day one i mean the it's been you know, a really good back and forth and we you know uh, it, it's it, it, it's it really you really have to if you, if you are going to work with somebody else there, there definitely has to be a trust there and uh, you know I definitely say that respect that, 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 that this does exist here I mean I, I think there is a mutual respect here and it does go both ways well what was the, one of the things that we said when we first started like I, what I told you about like different broadcasting pairs that I was influenced by you know like Grill and Bobby or you know um, even Don Cherry, Ron McLean, mm -hmm. there's a respect for one another. When they never take shots at one another, they listen to each other and they react to what each other's saying. And I see this again on a lot of podcasts where you get two hosts that aren't really listening to each other. They're just kind of talking. And just for the sake of, of hearing their own voice. You know, it, it comes down to having a mutual respect and that makes for a better, more compelling broadcast. It does.
Yep. So we got to start wrapping this up soon, but really just to kind of leave this on and get an, another positive note of advice, it, going back to really why we started this, like, this whole grassroots approach, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be afraid to say it, journalism or criticism, whatever the fuck you want to call us, I don't care what label you want to put on us, we're, we're just out to, to help the industry and to, to help the little guy move forward, to, to help people that don't necessarily get the exposure and people this is a community the only way grassroots works is if you all put in effort so i'm going to leave you this advice the community thing always wins out in the end i mean i, I want to give people an example of this really put to good use i always tell this to people back in the uh, around i think it was like 94 maybe 95 trouble charger uh, band mm -hmm. out of uh, what was it hamilton they put out self equals title this ep on Sonic Onion Records, which was the big indie record label of, of Hamilton in the 90s, right? It was huge, you know, like the epicenter yep. of Canadian indie rock scene. And, and Treble Charger, you know, love them or hate them, they, they kind of went mainstream later and flamed out. But at the height of their success, their indie success, what they did was something nobody else had done. They, they had quick time files on the CD because it was only an EP, they had that extra space to put quick time videos of other local unsigned acts. That inspired me from from then on. I've I like mm. love or hate Trouble Charger and Sonic. You know, they did something that 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 inspired me. It's like it's so easy to support other people when you have a platform where people are already listening to you to name drop a couple other people that you think are doing some great shit. You wouldn't be so, like blow, Joe. How has it helped your blog? You know, getting a few shout outs here and there on every episode. It, it, it's uh, you know, it's uh, I'm gonna touch on uh, touch on that uh, uh, briefly. Uh, um, that uh, especially our, our, our Twitch channel. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I just uh, looked at, um, at my my overview of my stats recently, and the majority of my view, uh, page reads lately have come from that uh, from that reference. From the link on the Twitch page. Exactly. Right, and, and, and we've had, like you said, we've had other broadcasters thank us personally for yeah. throwing shoutouts to them at the end because they're getting viewers. This is how the system works, people. And if you think you can rewrite the rules and reinvent the wheel, well, get back to the bottom of the ladder and let the fucking grown-ups do the work. You know what? It's interesting, and I'll, I'll bring this. is getting off topic, but I, I really want to share this. Uh, you know that you mentioned with the uh, Treble Charger giving little shows to other artists. You know, you know who was really good at this was that uh, on almost every, uh, I would say from the the mid the mid '90s, or sorry, probably more like uh, early 2000s up until now, the the uh, NHL uh, games that uh, EA Sports put out, all of their songs uh, in those are. are, are I would say probably about ninety percent of the time, those are up and coming artists, and and be, be, because of that exposure, then they get, get they've gotten in that game. It's brought it's brought them up into, into the mainstream. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, this is how the system works. It, it's it's a two way it's a community. street. And, and if you and if you are one of those lucky people to, to get a little bit of, bit of buzz and acclaim and, and get those subs, you know, more power to you. But never forget where you came from never forget yeah. what it was like when you only had say no subs <laughs> and you were wondering whether exactly. people even liked what you were doing never forget that at all even if you get big don't, never forget to support the little guy and again big shout out to review tech usa you know I'm, I'm not trying to kiss his ass but i'm just saying i love what he's doing right now with actually giving people actual shout outs putting their links up i think that does a lot to strengthen the community I, and, and between what we're doing what he's doing and other people like that just to try to bring the community together. That's 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 really how this thing gets strengthened and we get rid of that whole divide and conquer we were talking about in our podcast on stereotypes. Again, there's so much positivity to take out. Like we have an open forum, yeah. Joe. We can say whatever we want. We have people who follow us and that's amazing. Like we have a, we already have our little community and I'm so grateful and thankful for that. I'm Me so too. grateful and thankful for like YouTube being available and the fact that like our videos are starting to get monetized, you know, the copyright sensors have started backing off of us now. It, it really feels like this is starting to take form. And again, it, would, it wouldn't happen with the support, the love and support of like our fam, our direct families Absolutely. and the people who have been there like to keep us going when, when the days were dark. So, and, and that's why I gotta say to all the rest of you, you gotta put your time in. You've gotta have a yep. thick skin because this is a measure about whether you become a legend or or just a, a distant memory it's 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 how well you can ride that storm and prove mm. that you want to do this everybody's yeah. got to do that man you talk to you read any biography of any truly successful person like like look at steve jobs look at what he yeah. had to go through 
You know, it, well, no, we, we only live uh, we only live one life, Mike. You know, and, and uh, you got to make the best of it. You know, and exactly. And for, for, for me personally, this is, it's been one of the it's probably it's been one of the most creative and exciting things that I, I've ever been a part of, and uh, you know to 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 you know to to basically re- repeat what you said. You know, the the positive uh, feedback and the encouragement that we have received. You know, I, I'm I'm extremely g- grateful for, and uh, it's. Uh, you know, it it rem- reminds me of, of of why I've gotten into this, and uh, motivates me going forward to to keep uh, doing this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, this really is my my, my passion, what I'm what, what I love to what, what I love to do. You know, when, when we're, we're doing when we're recording shows, whether it be a round table or whether it be a rage quitters or a breaking news, I really feel like I'm in my my element. You know, it's I, I do I do have my, my my day job, but it's kind of morphed into me like where, where that's just what I do do to, to make money to survive, but I, I feel like this is my this is my thing that, that actually that I put all my my, my energy and my, my focus behind. You know, that, because you basically yeah sorry, you know that, that that's just like I said I, I'm possibly babbling now, but you know it, it's uh, my day job is just what what I, what I do to make money. I, I uh, I'll say it, no, I'm not particularly fond of it. I mean I don't think that's any secret, but. You know, when it comes to doing Joystick Justice League, I, I really feel like I'm I'm kind of in my element. Yeah, you know what? It's because and you, you you came to that because you weren't afraid to go like we say this all the time, go against the grain and go against what people were telling you was the right thing to do. People tell you, "Oh, this is a waste of time. You're not good enough to do this." Well, you said, "Fuck you. I'm going to prove you wrong." I've, and lo and behold, you've got we're 30 episodes in now. You know, so I've, like try and touch us now, like we're established. I've got I've gotten that to the majority of my life, Mike. Where, where people have uh, have told me, you know, and it's it's come from from multiple people. Whether it's uh, you know my, my father in, in particular, or, or some people uh, were were so called friends, you know that uh, I would try and do things, and they would say, "Oh no, you can't do that." And I've I've always tried to use that as motivation to not only prove them wrong, yep. but to but to actually show that that I can actually do it. So I think what we can learn wrapping this up, people, like we're b- jumping off what Joe's saying here. Please stop listening to the haters. It's tough. I know we're humans and it's hard to drown that noise out some nights, especially when other factors are affecting you, like the weather or the war going on or whatever. It's it's tough, but you gotta be strong. You've gotta you've gotta you've, like you said, Joe, you gotta use counter psychology like I did in high school when when I remember that day in grade nine when when the, the bullies came up to me and started, Oh, you Greek, what do you fuck sheep and stuff? Are you dirty sheep fucker? And and all I could think of to do was just try to think of every possible insult they hadn't thought of yet to get it out there so I could steal it from them so I'm like yeah yeah I fuck sheep it's awesome oh my like, la, 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 la. every right. fucking damn at the farm I'm just fucking banging that po- sheep poon tang and stuff you gotta fucking try it man you're fucking missing out and they're sitting there shaking they didn't know what to say they're like kind of like nervously laughing it's like oh fuck I wish I'd thought of that and all <laughs> of a sudden boom they never bothered me again uh, you know, I, now, that's I, an extreme I, example but I, again I, it's it's the counter psychology at work I, I got a lot of that in that school, uh, in school as well. I what, mean, sheep my, fucking? No, my, my uh, you know, I think we, we touched on this. Uh, I think it was when we uh, did uh, any, when we did uh, NHL Battle Arena. You know, because my, my last name is Morin, right? Or, or the, the proper French way of uh, pronouncing it is Morin. But, uh, but uh, I mean, when you look at that, I mean, it's shockingly similar to Moron, right? Oh. So I remember when I, when I, when I changed schools... And uh, I, I think I was I was the only new kid in the class, and I was told to introduce my name. Like I said, okay, well here's our new student. What's your name? And I, I just said, hi, uh, I'm new to this uh, class, and my name's Joe Moron. And oh. I could, I, and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and I mean, I, I could already spot like the kind of the bullish types, and I could tell like right away they're like, oh my god, like he he it's took like the that same. light bulb goes off, and they're. The, demonic they, heads they, they, they saw this thing that, that they that, that they could possibly bully me on and I just kind of went you know what my name is Moron and they didn't expect that right I, I, I think when, when, it, when it comes to uh, to kind of taking these bullies on and kind of putting, putting them in their place is to do something that they're not expecting yeah and that's why we, we try like we were saying before you try not to we try not to lash out at these people who call us out and react because that's what they want Joe. we know that bully mentality again it's not yeah. all it's not 100 effective but you do the best you can that's what I, my advice you, you gotta 
like like looking at like a Phil Fish, you know, like lashing out against his trollers and, and the damage that did to him. Because you're being negative, you're fighting negativity with negativity yourself, and and nobody wins, you know. And that's yeah. really hard to fight people, but you got to do it. And, and on the flip side, please be creative, be bold. Don't be afraid to speak your mind, and that is when you're going to get trolled on when you do speak your mind. When you, when you go against what, what what people have tried to to preach to you all your life, even though you know it's wrong, and you speak it anyway. Wrong. Be be bold, be creative, yeah. May, push this industry forward. Don't just let it stagnate. We, we, there's just so much to do, there is. so so much we we can elevate ourselves to do. So just challenge yourself, be yourself. Stop trying to be somebody else, or stop trying to get likes and, and throw out yeah. canned jokes. And, and the other thing too, people with humor. It's not just about studying comedian, it's about living life. I became yep. funny once I moved away from home, once I lived in the ghetto, once I started hanging out with gangsters, all the stupid shit I did in my 20s. That that made for meeting different people, being interested in different people other than your own clique. That is what develops your sense of humor, a, 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 an appreciation for, for the funny things about life. And that right. just gets from getting out of your house, from stop stop reading fucking magazines and mainstream newspapers. Get out there and live and talk to some real people. You know, because uh, there will there will always be those haters and those trollers. But the the key is is to, to remember that uh, yes, there will be that, but there will be people that will will actually listen and, and uh, see it to what you're what you're what you're saying, what you're showing, and actually. You know, I, I think there's gonna be more of those people than the haters that are actually gonna go, oh my god, they're gonna have that, oh my god, or you know, especially with us when it comes to a game, they're gonna see that and go, oh wow. Thank but you I, for. I, like, I've had people say I, thank you for I, turning I, me onto that game. I, I never, I never heard of that, and oh my god, you turned me onto this awesome game. I, 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 the, 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 those outweigh all the negative trollers. You know, that, yep. that, 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 that's that's where, where where I get that real kind of sense of satisfaction is when, when we clue somebody into to, to something that they didn't know about and then they, they go, wow, thank you. Because justice has been served. So people, keep creating, keep yes, loving each other. Yeah, okay, maybe it sounds like we're a little negative, but you know, deep down, like I want people, I want to see people united, see people stop fighting, especially in this war time. We have enough war out there. Let's stop warring with each other and embrace this culture. This has been Roundtable 8. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. We'll catch you on the flip side, guys. Subscribe to YouTube and lots more content coming soon. Peace and game on. Game on, guys.